It is official. Uglies is officially streaming on Netflix. For those who don't know, Uglies is the much anticipated film adaptation of Scott Westerfield's classic 2005 dystopian series. The story centers around Tally Youngblood and her best friend Paris. The two teens live in a dystopian future world where everyone dreams of the day they turn 16 because that's the day they get a cosmetic procedure to become beautiful. The government tells them that the reason they do this procedure is because it is the great equalizer. In a world in which everyone is beautiful, according to the logic of the government in the film, there will be no more discrimination, no more difference, and everyone can just be happy and get along. But it's a dystopia, not a utopia. So we know there's a fatal flaw. Tally spends most of her days staring at screens, thinking about one day when she'll finally get procedures to become quote unquote beautiful. Though as we know, the actress that plays her Joey King is already beautiful as she is. While she and her best friend Paris are bonded by scars on their hands that they promise they will always keep, she's afraid that once he goes to the city and becomes pretty, he'll forget all about her. Already a dichotomy of the us versus them, the good versus evil, the pretty versus ugly, the city versus the rural. Throughout the series and throughout the film, these are like key themes that come up. Sadly, after Paris goes to the city and gets his surgery and becomes quote unquote beautiful, he no longer responds to any of Tally's messages. And so she thinks something's wrong. She sneaks out and she goes to meet him. She can tell that there's something off. He's being very weird. He doesn't have the scar on his hand like he promised. He completely rebuffs her. But in her mind, she's like, it's okay. Once I get the surgery and become beautiful too, then I can go to the city and we can be friends again. In the meantime, she meets a new friend, Shay, who's the one right here. They both have all sorts of hijinks, breaking into the kitchen after hours to get food, using their special futuristic surfboards, going around the town. And Shay is also the one who keeps her from getting caught when she sneaks into the city. And a massive alarm starts going off and she knows that the cops are after her. But things really start to heat up when Shay reveals that the rumors about a mythic figure, David, who's this guy right here, that he's not just a myth, that he is real, and that there's a place called the smoke where people don't do things the way they're done in the city. And Tally is given a choice. Is she going to go to the smoke? Is she going to go with Shay? Is she going to leave everything she's known behind? Or is she going to move to the city and get the surgery and be with Paris, her childhood best friend? Now, I won't reveal any more than that because I want you to go watch the film. We get a wonderful performance from Laverne Cox, who is the president, dictator, leader figure in the film. Now, overall, my gut reactions after watching it is that this is an incredibly difficult film to go into the visual media form. I never thought that they would make an adaptation of this film because of the subject matter, because beauty is one such a subjective thing. Also, naturally, since it's like geared towards children, they didn't really spend that much time talking about cis-heteropatriarchy or how so much of the origins of what was considered beautiful originate in racism sexism, homophobia, all these things, fat phobia. And one of the most powerful aspects of this original, you know, quadrilogy is that you got to imagine these concepts in your head. So like when they're going into detail about how beautiful someone is, you got to imagine what your concept of beauty was. And in any book to visual adaptation, you know, these, these sort of imaginations can be flattened by the just mere medium. But I do think that the, the film tries to walk the fine line of acknowledging its difficult source subject. And it tries to really, again and again, preach the, uh, what I think is an important message for kids, which is it doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. What matters is what you look like on the inside. And spoiler warning, um, if you want to stop watching here, if you don't want to know kind of what happens at the end. Once they do go to the smoke, one of the messages over and over again that I really like is that to truly be alive is to accept yourself imperfectly as you are and to love yourself despite society's perceived flaws of you. And I would go a step further that those aren't even flaws in the first place, that like the concept of flaws were like invented by European heteropatriarchal norms of beauty that were used as ways to like classify, enslave, uh, hierarchize people anyways. And the concept of what is beautiful or what is not beautiful is like a man-made concept that has often been used as a way to oppress and to get people to feel insecure about themselves. I understood as a whole an incredible series about beauty and all of that. I would definitely recommend you go watch that her whole playlist here on TikTok. It's incredible. I mean, she does such a great job breaking down a lot of these concepts, especially like the myth of inclusive beauty. 
But despite um, the kind of really big subject matter they're tackling, I think for a kid's film, they did a pretty, you know, interesting job. I mean, it was definitely watchable. It was interesting. There were some good performances. It was, I, I must admit that despite the problematic elements of this film, I love a lot of these actors outside of this film. So it was exciting to see them in this film. And then it was also just really cool to see one of my childhood favorite book series adapted into film. And I would love to continue to see more adaptations of this. I will say it's not looking good so far because the reviews are pretty bad. Um, it looks like the audience score, which Rotten Tomatoes would like us all to know, the audience score is now called Popcornometer, which I don't know why they did that. Uh, it looks like the audience liked it, but the uh, critical reviews, as you can imagine, were probably, I haven't read them, but you can see 22%. That's, that's pretty bad. I think it's really hard to consume a film like this out of the context of the time it was written. Like in the time that this these, this book series was written, it was the year 2005. iPhones did not exist yet. Instagram did not exist yet. Facebook did not even exist yet. I mean, this was literally like a completely different era. This was a completely different way. Obviously, people have always struggled with addiction to screens. And one of the big messages of this film is kind of like one of those 1984 Big Brother messages of how the state wants to control like information flows and that to be truly liberated is to like think for yourself I mean that's kind of like a timeless classic message but some of the social media messaging it's um it's interesting to see like how it's become more, way more applicable as time has gone on and like our constant obsession with the deification of self and the way that we're like obsessed with creating these personal brands and creating these kind of identities of beautiful, cool, all these things. It's like interesting to consider that the books were written in 2005. I do think that I'm going to do a reread of this series because it's been probably like 20 years or since I've read them, maybe like 15 years. I should say like 15 years probably. And it must be really interesting and perhaps bittersweet um, given the critical reception, but just an interesting experience for Scott Westerfield to have these, these beloved books finally adapted to screen. Just want to note that Scott Westerfield is a prolific writer. If you are if you like this series, if you enjoyed reading them as a kid, I would highly recommend checking out his other work. I mean, this man has been working, as you can see. And within the Uglies universe, there's a ton of books. There's also a graphic novel spinoff from Shay's point of view, which I'm really excited to read because Shay's one of my favorite characters. You can read a little bit more about him here. Scott also recently tweeted, just to be clear, Ugly's Taliungalad is a product of 24th century prenatal technology and lifelong post-scarcity healthcare. Even before her surgery, she would be she would be as gorgeous to us as we would be to 18th century teeth missing peasants. And he goes on to say, I guess the real message is no matter what they look like objectively, everyone struggles while staring in the mirror. The only lasting beauty is found in community and love. And I think it is likely that he wrote this in response to a lot of the media, perhaps criticism or response to some of the casting choices. Also, just like from a I love Laverne Cox perspective, I mean, reason enough to watch this film. And if you decide like if you perhaps take a gummy and watch this like not with a um, super serious eye and decide to watch it more as like a satirical almost like farcical facetious film like it's kind of camp in a way it's like the threat of like constantly being put into this machine that like cranks up the cuntometer and then you come out with like literally like face fully beat like in a dress like wig on like it's just kind of like funny but obviously this film also has a lot of deeper layers and I really thought everyone gave pretty good performances. I know that it's a trilogy. I think it's a quadrilogy. I don't know if extras, I've never read extras. I only read the first three books, so I don't know if it's considered a quadrilogy or a trilogy. But overall, so much to think about this film. I just, I'm probably going to rewatch it at some point. I love the YA dystopia genre, like Hunger Games. That is just my vibe. So it was definitely kind of felt like memory lane, almost like getting back into those type of narratives. Um, but I would love to hear your thoughts on the film, what you thought of the performances. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video.